all of us know about the phenomenon of turbulence and the different type of flows that exhibit turbulent behavior but do we really understand the characteristics of turbulent flows well depending on who you talk to the definition of turbulence may be different while it is difficult to give a concise and precise definition for turbulence there are several traits that are common to all turbulent flows let us dig into each one of them irregular or unsteady all turbulent flows are inherently unsteady if you take a turbulent river flow and measure the flow velocity at a given point you will probably notice a graph that looks like the one shown here this turbulent field can be decomposed into a steady or a quasi steady mean field and unsteady random fluctuations diffusivity turbulent flows are characterized by significantly enhanced levels of mixing and momentum and heat transport it is because of this nature that certain applications prefer turbulent flow to the laminar flow one such is the dimple design of the golf ball due to the surface roughness that is the dimple the flow over the ball is turbulent and hence the boundary layer on the ball stays attached for a longer time because of this the drag on the ball reduces allowing it to travel farther than when compared to a smooth ball of the same dimensions large reynolds numbers turbulent flows occur only at large reynolds numbers the instability of the laminar flows eventually results in their transition to exhibit turbulent character three dimensional vorticity turbulence is inherently three dimensional and rotational and is characterized by high levels of vorticity though disturbances that result in the laminar to turbulent transition may start as two dimensional for example the tolmin schlichting waves they quickly adopt a three dimensional behavior dissipative turbulence cannot sustain itself it always requires an energy source without a constant input of energy turbulence quickly decays you can easily notice this in the behavior of water when a stone is thrown in it as soon as the stone immerses into the water the water exhibits chaotic turbulent character however after some time it goes back to its original state of being placid that is because the event that triggered turbulence was not sustained continuum turbulence is a continuum phenomenon the smallest scales of turbulence are still orders of magnitude greater than the molecular length scales flow property turbulence is a property of fluid motion this is a very important feature in understanding turbulent flows irrespective of which fluid is being used at a given reynolds number the turbulent dynamics of any of those fluids will be the same one of the major features of the turbulent flows is the presence of different scales of motion take the example of smoke emitting from an erupting volcano you will be able to clearly see swirls of different sizes in that turbulent smoke the largest scales are of the size of the mouth of the volcano and the size of the smallest ones is determined by the diffusion effect of the molecular viscosity let us now take the example of a turbulent flow over a flat plate to understand the dynamics of these large and small scale structures for such a problem the large scales are of the order of the boundary layer thickness 
These are responsible for extracting the energy from the mean flow in order to sustain the turbulent characteristic of the flow. The characteristic velocity of these large-scale structures is comparable to the mean flow velocity and is of the order of the root mean squared of the turbulence intensity. From these, it is easy to obtain the characteristic time scale of the eddies as shown here. This time scale is also referred to as the eddy turnover time. If we assume that the time scale of the large scale structures is comparable to the time scale of the mean flow, we can write the large eddy turnover time scale as shown here. These energy containing large scale eddies impose a straining effect on the smaller scales. Because of the vortex stretching mechanism, an exchange of energy takes place between the larger scales and the smaller scales, forcing the smaller structures to deform. This also increases their vorticity. The process of energy exchange between the large scales and the small scales is referred to as the energy cascade. This energy transfer process is central to the theory of turbulent flows. At really small scales, referred to as the microscales, molecular viscosity takes over and decays the turbulent velocity fluctuations. This effectively stops the energy cascade and any remaining energy is then converted into heat. Richardson was the first scientist to identify this energy cascade and eloquently worded the process as Big worlds have little worlds which feed on their velocity and little worlds have lesser worlds and so on to viscosity. Now that we have the knowledge of larger scales of the turbulent flow, let us characterize the smaller scales. Before we do so, let us identify the key mechanisms that affect the small scale features. We know that these small scales take energy from the large scales, which eventually is dissipated by viscosity. Therefore, it is fair to say that the total amount of energy transfer must be equal to the dissipation rate. Using these two variables, it is possible to construct the different dynamic scales of motion, that is, length, time and velocity for the smallest structures of the flow. These relations are shown here. Notice that the Reynolds number of these small scales is unity. This indicates that the viscous forces are equal to the inertial forces. The scales at which the Reynolds number is unity are referred to as the Kolmogorov scales, named after the scientist Andrei Kolmogorov, who was a pioneer in studying turbulence. In 1941, he proposed three similarity hypotheses regarding small-scale structures and their dynamics. The first one is that at sufficiently high Reynolds number, the small-scale turbulent motions are statistically isotropic. He argued that the large-scale structures are influenced by the mean motion of the fluid flow and hence are anisotropic. However, in the chaotic process of energy cascade, this directional bias of the large-scale structures is lost and so the small-scale structures exhibit an isotropic behavior. His second theory was that at sufficiently high Reynolds numbers, the statistics of the small-scale motions have a universal form that is uniquely determined by the dissipation rate and viscosity. This hypothesis basically imposes a universal form to the small-scale structures that is independent of the fluid problem. In other words, 
no matter what turbulent fluid problem one encounters the small scale features exhibit the same behavior which is determined by the viscosity and the rate of dissipation if we consider the ratio of the scales of the smallest and the largest structures we get the following relations notice that as the reynolds number of the flow increases the ratio reduces what that basically means is that the difference between the length scales of the largest and the smallest structures increases with the increasing reynolds number furthermore there will be a range of intermediate structures which are small compared to the large scale structures but are large compared to the small scale structures this was the basis for kolmogorov's third hypothesis at sufficiently high reynolds number the statistics of the motions of scales in the intermediate range have a universal form that is uniquely determined by the dissipation rate and is independent of viscosity in other words viscosity does not impact the dynamics of these independent range structures let us graphically organize all these structures in the turbulent flow based on kolmogorov's hypothesis on isotropy we will introduce a length scale that distinguishes between the anisotropic large scale structures and the isotropic small scale structures this length scale is usually taken to be around 1/6 the size of the integral scale of the flow based on the definition of the small scale structures by kolmogorov we can identify the smallest scales in the flow where the reynolds number is 1 between the newly defined length scale distinction to the smallest scale the range is referred to as the universal equilibrium range which is a direct fall out of kolmogorov's first similarity hypothesis based on his second hypothesis we can specify a demarcation within the universal equilibrium range that identifies the onset of the impact of viscosity on flow structures till now we spoke a lot about the energy transfer let us now formalize the idea using mathematical relations the turbulent kinetic energy for a range of structures with a varied wavelength can be written as shown here e is the energy density since the energy transfer in the inertial range is dependent only on the rate of dissipation using dimensional analysis we can obtain a relation for the energy density as shown here this is the famous fifth third law proposed by kolmogorov that is used to determine the energy contained in the eddies of a certain length within the inertial range that brings us to the end of this lesson